Hello friends, welcome to the vlog. Uh, it's been a while and this one has been a long time coming. Lurking in the back of a few vlogs and other videos has been this guitar. It's a 2002 PRS Makati soap bar model. For those of you who maybe don't know, Ted McCarty was president of Gibson between years, which you can Google. Anyway, he presided over lots of really important stuff, including the Les Paul, the uh, Explorer, V335, all of the semi-hollow guitars, SG, Firebird, probably loads of stuff I haven't mentioned anyway. He was a monumental figure at Gibson. Paul Reed Smith befriended him later in life and uh, kind of mined him for information. And it's Ted's name that you see on every PRS McCarty model, be it one of these or indeed one of the newer ones. Um, lots of people are asking me, why don't you play that guitar? It looks really cool. It does look really cool. And literally everyone who sees it, from Dan and Simon to Joey Landreth to anyone else who comes in here, honk, 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 goes, wow, that's a cool guitar. I got it uh, maybe 2003, 2004, something like that, around that time anyway and was instantly put off it from a gig I did one night. <laughs> um, I went and did a blues jam, plugged it in, and it was just mud. There was nothing. And then every time I've used it thereafter, the guitar is fantastic to play, in common with many, many PRS guitars. It is simply awesome guitar to play. Um, it feels great. The neck is lovely. It's not over-ostentatious. You know, it has the moons, not the birds, which if you like simple guitars, which I do, uh, the moons are tend to be your preferred choice. David Grissom is a big fan of the McCarty model. In fact, uh, he played one for years and I think he was absolutely instrumental in its development as well, which of course became eventually his DGT model, which is slightly different. So why this vlog? Okay, I think the problem with these guitars is the pickups. It came with some Seymour Duncans that um, were wound for this guitar and they've never been right for me. Fans of the show will know that I don't like powerful pickups. I tend to find that you hear more pickup than guitar and something in my style just really doesn't suit a more powerful pickups. Not to say they're not great and they don't work for some people, but they really don't work for me. So um, I've got some Lollas and I'm gonna swap them out. Bit less powerful and I think they're gonna have a different kind of EQ character and maybe a different dynamic range as well, even though the DC resistances may not be that far apart. We'll get into all of that as we as we do the pickup swap. Um, so yeah, 2002 PRS McCarty soap bar. And as regular viewers may also know, my favorite solid body P90 guitar is this Collings 290 DCS. Not exactly the same thing. I think it's fair to say that the original inspiration for this guitar, you know, the 50s Les Paul Jr. was also Paul Reed Smith's uh, major inspiration when he first got into guitar making. And as such, you can see certain, you know, things that are common. Even though this is a solid mahogany body junior style um, with no carving, while this takes the sort of more ornate Gibson approach with a carved maple top on top of the mahogany body, etc. You can look the specs up if you're that interested. So they are not the same thing, but I'm gonna use it as a reference because it is a spectacular sounding guitar and at least it gives us something to compare to as we go through. I might even throw the DGT in there as well. What you're gonna hear next is the guitars in their current state. So exactly as they are before any pickup swaps, before anything, I'm gonna play a few bits. I've even got a little backing track that I might play some stuff over um, and we can just see where we are.
Okay, bright and early the next morning, my bottom. That didn't exactly happen. Internet went down, engineer had to come in, loads of things needed to be done. Such is the story of one's life. Never complain about it because it is good. What it does mean though is that stuff like this gets endlessly pushed down the line. Some of you will doubtless be thinking, what, are you telling me you've had that guitar since the mid-2000s and it's taken you 15 years to put new pickups in it? Kind of yes, kind of no. Um, I did lend it to someone for seven years, so. And then it's been, it's been sat by whatever desk I sit at as the guitar that I pick up and play. So that's my excuse. Anyway, on with the show. I thought that sound stuff was pretty interesting. I've actually, before I've reco I'm recording this section of the vlog, I've done the audio and I've cut it in with the track and um, had a listen to the guitar sounds. What's really interesting is some of that, what I would call excess histrionic high end that you get sometimes, especially out of the Dan Drive Tweedy Drive, can sound a bit harsh in isolation, but you in in isolation, but you get it in a track and all of a sudden it starts working. Anyway, that's that's a whole other separate discussion. I thought both guitars sounded pretty good to be honest. Um, the Collings definitely has more poise. Um, I think it's got more character. This one is definitely this one being the PRS. Definitely got more push, definitely got more grunt, but it does have that slight unpleasantness when you hit it hard. The wooliness that I was talking about earlier wasn't immediately apparent until you step on loads again and then it literally just goes blanket like. The Collings does do that but at a kind of higher level so I'm I've got high hopes for these lollers. Right all of you guitar repair people out there and people who are enthusiastic about this stuff it's the usual fist in mouth uh, biting your fingernails time because I'm going to tear it all to pieces and, and rewire it. Which is new territory for me because A, I'm not that familiar with P90s, although the wiring conventions are the same for humbuckers, two conductor humbuckers anyway. Um, and the whole control cavity thing is a new world for me because I'm used to five-way switches or three-way switches like a telly, you know, blade selectors um, and two or three pots. All the wiring diagrams I can find uh, for traditional style P90 or two humbuckers and four controls or two P90s and four controls have four controls, but this guitar has two controls. I did find a bunch of diagrams, um, some of which I trust and some of which I trust less. Uh, so I've cross-referenced a bunch. One thing I did was went to the Emerson custom website. I've done that because, uh, well, partly because my pots and caps are Emerson. And if you look at the pictures of Emerson's wiring, it is a thing of sheer beauty. And they do pre-wired kits like this, which to be honest, had I been more organized, I would have done, but I haven't done that. So what I've done is I've, I've checked the Emerson diagram, which actually is different from the way the guitar is wired up currently. Did a bit more cross-referencing to throw back to Seymour Duncan all around the place and have, have Stumbled across the old 50s wiring thing, which we've, we've discussed in the past. And I'm pretty certain that this Emerson picture that I have, cross-referenced with the throwback, cross-referenced with what's in the back of the, the Collings, has got me to a point where I can kind of adapt the Emerson picture with a couple of other lines and do my own wiring diagram. So I'm semi-confident about that. Lola pickups. Here they are, they're in black covers currently, because that's all that was available when I bought them. So we have some practical considerations. First thing I'm gonna do is take the old pickups out of, out of the guitar and see if the new ones will fit physically, because one of the nightmares with P90s, soap bars especially, well, all P90s in fact, are the covers, whether they're gonna fit or not. If they don't, it's pause and I've got to order some more covers, but we'll see. Um, I'm also not really sure how they're attached in there. I've done P90s before and they tend to sit on the guitar with either a bit of foam rubber underneath or something like that. So we'll see what we find. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a template like this and I'm going to wire it all up outside of the guitar and then put it in the guitar because that seems to be a smart way to do it. Um, yeah, all right, let's pull the guitar to bits. Let's see what we find then.
Okay, apologies in advance for the wobbly scope. If the camera shakes while I do things, it's on the same table that I'm doing the work. These things come off, just in case you didn't know that. Uh, actually, Bridges is a really interesting one. My dear friend, Joey Landreth, honk, has been doing his nut trying to find a decent wrap over bridge that sounds good, but that also will deal with his uh, crazy heavy strings in terms of intonation. He can find one that does one or the other. He can find them that sound good or that deal with the intonation, but he's really struggling to find one that does both. So I think he's actually developing one made out of the right stuff. That feels like pretty good light, whatever. It wasn't actually aluminium that the original ones were made out of, but that's for another day. Right, I have unsoldered the pickups in the back. Um, I've, I've done that already, I'll spare you that. Obviously these are the pole pieces, these ones with the flat heads. The ones in between are the ones holding the pickup in. So let's have those out. Yeah, it looks like there's something spongy underneath it. Yeah, springs. This, I, I mean, that, that may well be common, but I've never seen that before. So um, we'll put those aside, might use those again actually. So let's compare these pickups then. Um, here's the PRS uh, Seymour Duncan made P90 bridge. Here is the Lola bridge. Let's have a look. What can we see? Uh, much deeper magnet of differing that's interesting. Somebody who knows about P90 pickups will understand what they're seeing there. I don't really. Um, but even in their physical construction, I think we can say these pickups are going to sound very different. Uh, that one's got a like a metal base plate on it. The magnet structure is entirely different. Interesting. Tremendously interesting. Right, let's see if these covers fit on the Lollas then. The good news is they look of remarkably similar dimension. <laughs> really? Really? The holes for the pole pieces are off by next to nothing. I, I, I actually do not believe that. Look at that. Perfect. Sorry, mister. Not for you. Ah! How annoying is that? It actually will not fit. I can't believe it. So I'm going to go ahead and fit them with the black covers. And then I'm going to phone my mate Damien. Uh, Damien is the UK and Europe distributor for Lola pickups and say I need some cream covers please send them forthwith and then that should be relatively easy just to undo the screws put the new pickup covers on and um okay uh and neck pickup hello, hello mate uh you're you're live you're live on candid camera well, not exactly live, but um, oh, that's Jackson. Yeah. Uh, and that's Martha. Hey, Martha. So they're packing stuff for you, are they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Awesome. Nice T-shirt too, by the way. Oh, thanks very much. Yeah. So, uh, viewers, um, I told you about Damien earlier. This is Damien, um, even though he's very small in the screen at the moment. Now, Damo, when we had a conversation yesterday. Yeah. I told you I might have a problem. Yes. Here are my lovely Lola pickups, soap bars. Yeah, P90s. Here are the lovely black yeah. Lola covers. Yeah. Guess what? They don't fit. The blinking Seymour Duncan ones don't fit. And they're off they by like fit. a gnat's chuff. Really yeah. tiny. Um, I was astounded. Have you got any covers? Uh, well, if not, can I order some? Hey, Jackson. Ah, oh, you beauty. I'll get those to you today, my friend. You're a lovely man. Oh, so you, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to get back to wiring. All right, mate. Cheers, mate. See ya. Bye. Bye. Let's have a measure up, shall we? This is the Seymour Duncan bridge pickup. We're going to say 12.2. This is the Lola bridge pickup. We're going to say 9.46. This B ye oldie Seymour Duncan neck pickup. 
8.1, and this be the Lolla neck pickup. 8.45, so uh, possibly a little bit hotter than the PRS neck, pick, neck pickup. Numbers tell part of the story. What I'm going to do now is take out all the old gubbins. Do they pull off? Thank goodness. I was pulling that really hard thinking there was going to be some sort of crazy fail. Unlike strap knobs, you can actually get hold of these and just pull them straight up. The danger is, if you don't pull them straight up and you pull them slightly on the wonk, um, you can really damage the spline of the of the knob. Uh, can I undo this with my superpower fingers? Yes, I can. I don't suppose I'm going to be able to do, undo these with my superpower fingers, so some sort of wrench required for that. Nobody panic. Obviously, if you're going to take a something like a spanner to the top of the guitar, you need to be careful of the finish, especially here when you've got these divoted uh, control cavities there. Um, as always, I'm not especially worried about any of that stuff. Um, I like my guitars a bit wrecked, which will be total anathema to many people watching this. And that's fine. Um, I'll just hold this. I don't know if it's going to be in focus or not. It'll be there or thereabouts, I think. Hopefully that should all just come out there. Open wide, Mr. Johnson. Say, ah, uh, scream in agonizing pain if you can feel this. Talk about the wrong way to do things. <laughs> and as the light fades, I think we can be assured of a fairly late evening. So, uh, right, cover, screw, spring, blah, blah, blah. Another one of those jobs you need three hands for. Driver of screws! There she blows. Bridge. Cool. Obviously we'll worry about setting the height when the strings are on. The pickup leads are now coming down into the control cavity. And what I'm going to attempt now is to make the template uh, so that I can do the wiring and then just fix it all in the guitar and do the pickup uh, leads last. I figured that the easiest way to make the template, uh, rather than trying to cut out something that's exactly the right shape, is just measure the distance between the centres of the holes. 110 volt to switch, 61 and remember why I went to school is 88 millimeters is 110 and we know that the tone to the switch is 61. I'm going to go find a computer and make that. Right, here's my little template that I've made. As long as I don't make the connections too tight, uh, obviously you've got a bit of wiggle room because it's wires, not solid connections, so it, that should all fit in there. Um, as you can see, there's the cavity of the guitar and the things go in thusly. So all I need to do now is find something hard to uh, attach that to and that can be my template. Two bits of cardboard lovingly um, gaffered together there. Actually it's duct tape but because it doesn't have to be small right because it's going to come off there before it goes in the guitar so may as well give yourself something to be able to move it all around with. Manual marking device. That tells me where I need to drill my holes. Right then, beautiful it ain't, but do it will. Um, you try drilling holes in cardboard. Near enough. Probably won't be able to see, but you can see the holes and they are more or less in the right place enough to wire. So now the thing to check uh, is to just make sure that I <laughs> wire it the right way around so the pots come in from this side. Wiring knobs. Bit bitty this one isn't it? This is where I tell you to just go and buy the Emerson pre-wired kit because it'll save you loads of time and it's beautifully done. I'm interested. 500k pots, Emerson Pro pots. Okay, pot A. 
pot B. So there's a bit of variance there. What I might do, I don't know if it really makes that much difference, but I'm going to swap the volume and tone around because the tone's going to spend most of its life up full, i.e. on near enough zero resistance. And the volume is going to spend all its time being kind of there or thereabouts. So I'm going to swap them around so that the more the 500k one is up here. Who knows? Okay, significant time has passed. I'm actually finding this really difficult. I'm trying to do it all neat like the Emerson one, completely copying them. I've got two main problems. One, my shrink wrap's too big. So uh, that doesn't that's not really doing the job it's supposed to do. Um, and secondly... I haven't really worked much with this braided wire. It's really fiddly when you don't know how, but I'm just going super slow, trying to trying to get it there. I've watched a couple of um, six string supplies. I must mention six string supplies uh, online. I watched their tutorial about how to um, deal with the braided wire, just as a refresher there. So yeah, I'm going super slow. This is the part where I tell you that when you get a really great tech to do something, you're not paying them for the 20 minutes it takes them to do it. You're paying them for the 10 hours it doesn't take you to do it. So um, yeah, on we plod. Okay, getting real late here. It's now quarter to 8 p.m. I think I finished, but for one, well, for the obvious thing, the pickups aren't attached. I'm just gonna show you what I've done. now. I've tried to copy the Emerson wiring and, uh, you know, it's it's clearly not as beautiful. Um, let's get the focus sorted out. That's more closer to it, I think. I mean, it's clearly not as beautiful, but it's all right. And I think it's going to work. I don't really know. The thing I'm confused about is whether the ground, whether the switch should be grounded. Some forums say it shouldn't, doesn't need to be. Others say it should because uh, I can't see from the <laughs> from the Emerson thing whether it's grounded, but I'm assuming that that wire over the top of the switch there, the ground is on the back on that particular switch, whereas on this, the ground and the, um, the hot are both on the same side of the switch. So I'm going to say that it does need to be grounded, and I'm going to run a wire from the ground to the ground lug to the back of the pot there, which should do that. Um, then uh, I've literally got a the pickups attached to these two lugs on the three-way switch. So the wires will come down through the cavity, ground on the back of the volume pot there, and the hot wires will run up to the um, back of the switch. In theory, <laughs> that's it. Let's see. Okay, moment of truth then. I appreciate you can't see fully inside the cavity. I'll try and tilt it up like this every now and again so you can. So I need to get my harness now in there so let's see if it comes off here cleanly I have to say I mean I've wired my fair share of strats in my time and at least one 335 a um, couple of single p90s plenty of single pickup swaps you know just swapping out a humbucker or stuff like that but this try to do it cleanly and tidily and um, you know keep it looking nice and I've got no real way of testing because I don't really know anything about electronics so it's not like I can go oh I'll just test that I've seen one comedy error I've attached the jack socket <laughs> I've attached the jack socket before I've uh, won't go back through the hole because it's got to go in through there do okay fine don't no don't panic nobody panic don't panic mr. Mannering Here's my harness then. If my joints are all good, that should all be fairly okay. Kind of get lowered down in there. Blinking ground wire out of the way. For those of you, oh, okay, right, well, oh, sort of kind of gone in there. Here we are. Nice. There you go. <laughs> I mean, it's not a shameful job. Uh, those little twists you can see on the cap there, by the way, it's a 0 0.022 Bumblebee style cap. Um, those little twists, I saw Collings do that. And the only thing I can assume is if you do a little harness like this, it's got a bit of flex so it can fit in there. And also if you need to use the cap again, uh, you've got a little bit of extra leg there that you can stretch out. So um, I assume that's what it's for. I don't know, but I did it anyway, just for a bit of boutique feel. <laughs> Hilarious. 
attached to pickups, and it should work. Famous last blooming words, eh? Oh my god. Learning points so far. Have a diagram. <laughs> uh, yeah. Join me for the moment of truth then, where I'm pretty much guaranteed it's not going to work. And if it doesn't, I'm going to go home, because I am a little bit testy around the edges at this point. Well, the jack plug doesn't go in, because I've had to shove too much cable in the, uh, in the uh, cavity. Bridge pickup. <laughs> nah. I don't believe it. I've wired the blooming switch the wrong way around. <laughs> but it works. I can barely believe that. Okay, that is a really simple fix, just to swap those two hot wires on the pickups around. I have really messed up that jack plug. Um, I just wired the switch the wrong way around. So that's easy. So we take, uh, sorry you can't see this, um, that wire off there, that wire off there. I just had a bit of a spatial awareness moment with the, um, with the three-way switch. So you go on there. That's Dan texting me. I just texted him to say, it's never going to work. And he texted me. He, I suspect, I'm going to guess that his text message will. Of course it will, you idiot. Um, switch here has connectors left and right, depending on the position of this. I just got them the wrong way around, that's all. I don't quite believe this. I don't quite believe it. That's going to require some sorting out. Uh, bridge earth wire. That's what's not on. Anyway, uh, bridge pickup. Tone. <laughs> Neck pickup. Tone. Volume. Get in! So I just need to find that wire for the ground. I would also like to record for posterity this moment of personal injury. This is my actual blood, real Mick blood on the headstock this PRS, because the last person who strung it did the silly ties with the silly string ties, which you don't need to do, especially the end of my fingers. There it is, mixed blood shall remain on this axe. <sighs> Good day. Um, I left here last night in fairly ebullient mood because it worked. Much to my amazement, it worked. Um, given that I had to guess at a few of the connections based on pictures and um, partial diagrams. I was hoping to get going early this morning, totally failed, other things happened, I've had to do other things. But the good news is, um, I've got two problems to fix. The first one is whatever the heck's going on in the jack socket. The second problem, so my lovely friend Damien, who you met yesterday, early on, sent me... Ta -da! Green pickup colours. So, this will tell a story. That's better. Like I said, some of you might prefer the black pickup covers, but um, the aesthetic for me is a cream, so that's what we'll go with. That was surprisingly easy. You just undo the screws, gently lift the covers off, so to not move the relative position of the pickup and the springs. Gently lift the pickup covers off, gently put the new one back on, screw them back down, happy days. Right, that's job number one. Job number two, I'm gonna fix this jack socket. It's so interesting. Every time you do anything like this, I mean, that's a sort of 
point of a side, there's probably quite a few people watching going, oh my God, why don't you just get a tech to do it? Yeah, maybe. Um, what is really interesting about doing it is you learn something tiny every time and something else to check for next time. And that's, yeah, that's what learning is, isn't it? Hopefully. The PRS guitars, well, I don't know about all of them, but certainly all of my ones, I have this jack socket on the edge there with a nice metal plate. And it fits in a drilled out hole which it kind of, you know, there's enough room in there, but not a huge amount of room, not over amount of room. What happens is when you put the jack in, it sort of lifts up so that uh, you get good contact at the tip. What I've done is I've managed to trap the cable <laughs> between, uh, between the little arm thing and the cavity edge, so it physically couldn't move. It's as simple as that. There's something to learn for next time, isn't it? Right, I'll do a couple of close-ups of the cavity so you can see the finished article. There's a couple of things that I'm not happy with, but you know what? Um, it's all right. I could have trimmed the wires shorter, let's say that, uh, on the pickups, but I've deliberately left them a bit longer so that if there's any repairs that need to happen or these pickups need to go into another guitar, then hopefully the wires are going to be long enough for that to take place. So I've left a little bit of slack. Um, what else? I mean, you know, you know what? I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's all gone in there quite nicely. My shrink wrap isn't beautiful. My shrink wrap wasn't small enough for the wires, but in any case, there's enough physical pressure of it touching up against other things in order for it to do the job. Um, I mean, you don't need to shrink wrap the stuff, but I really love the way Emerson do it, so I tried to copy it. Uh, and that's it. That is it. My soldering has improved a little bit. The, the joints all look a bit better. Um, and the solder's flowing better. Uh, I want to say thank you to everyone who's left tips uh, on improving that whole thing. So, uh, yeah, thank you to everyone in the Strat Vlogs who's helped with all that kind of stuff. There you go, then. Done. Pickup's in. They work. Let's string it up, set the pickup heights, and have a listen to it. Finally. <laughs>
Thank <laughs> you.
There we go then. Something to clear up about the track you just watched. Apologies, I managed not to press record on one of the guitar parts. You saw all the guitar parts except where it went. And then there was the other part that kind of went... Um, So yeah, apologies, I managed to not hit record on the camera for that bit. Otherwise, you saw everything that was happening. Also, at the end, you hear a kind of step filter thing. That was the Jam Pedals Delay Llama Extreme in its step uh, mode, where it gives you random pitch shifts on the delay repeats, which is really cool. I really like it. What are we to conclude then? I definitely prefer the new pickups, specifically the bridge pickup. It seems to not have the thing that the guitar had before, which was extra harmonic ugliness complication overtones from what I felt was an overly powerful bridge pickup. Those pickups I think work exceptionally well for sometimes for clean sounds, you know, think of an EMG clean, lovely, lovely EMG clean sound, like a ceramic magnet humbucker in high rock, uh, high gain rock sounds. That's a wonderful sounding thing. But for me, you know, those in between gain sounds, I, it doesn't work. It, creates ugliness that I don't really like. And that seems to be all but gone from the guitar now, and it was definitely there before. The guitar's got less push. I've used the word push, and I've used the word poise. I think it's got less push. If you go back to nine minutes to listen to the clean tremolo parts, um, even with the volume roll back a bit, it's just overdriving much more quickly than the Collings did. And I think by removing some of that less push, more poise, it just seems to have more harmonic richness, uh, maybe more fundamental or something. I don't know, I'm picking words out of the air here, but to me it just sounds cleaner uh, and, and nicer and easier to deal with. There's no significant corrective EQ on any of the guitars on anything you've heard, including the track. Uh, my standard setting for the Neve 1073 or 1084 UAD preamp strips is to put the high pass filter on at 50 Hertz to get rid of the rumble. I'll boost it maybe maybe by one and a half dB at 3.2 K and a tiny bit at 10 K just to give a bit of air. And that is uniform all the way across. So every single guitar you heard is processed in exactly the same way. For absolutely sure, some of the things that annoy me about the, PR, the PRS as it was, you could correctively EQ. Didn't do that for the purposes of uh, comparison in this video. Uh, what about strings? Weren't the strings new when you put them on after the uh, pickup swap? Yeah, they were. They were newer, slightly newer, not massively newer. And also they'd had a good hour and a half, maybe at least playing in uh, before I did any recording, which also gave the pickup a little bit of time just to settle in. I have heard pickup makers say that it takes, you know, a time for a pickup to settle in uh, before it starts sounding right. And who knows, maybe even more than two hours. And that points towards what the most interesting part of this vlog is going to be, which is probably the next few months as uh, Dan and I record shows and hear the guitar in context next to the instruments that we know so well. This might be then a good backstory to, to what we hear over those, uh, over those coming months. The neck pickup. I'm not sure I'm ever going to love it. Uh, either this Lola or the original Duncan that was in there. It's so thick sounding. Um, it doesn't have that kind of springiness and plumminess that a Strat have. It's, it just has so much bass. And I. that's either because it's overwound or it might have something to do with the physical position. I don't really know. I don't know enough about this style of guitar. It's butted right up against the end of the fingerboard there, which obviously it isn't on a Strat or a Tele. I don't know if it's actually closer, you know, further down the neck, whether it's further away from the bridge. That would be an interesting thing to measure. Um, but anyway, uh, I can't see me using the neck pickup much unless it's a very specific sound, which I EQ the amp for, you know, it'd be great for lovely, clean, jazzy stuff, which I literally never play. So, um, yeah, I think I'll be most of the time on the bridge pickup, maybe one of those staple type P90s that you got in fifties, Les Paul customs. Um, maybe that, don't know. Aside from all of that, I'm happier. I think the guitar will get used much more, which makes it all worth it. Uh, next time I would definitely buy an Emerson Custom pre-wired harness. <laughs> but like I say, you know, the, the learning that you gain each time you do something like this is uh, instructive and uh, just increases your whole experience, I guess, if you have the time.
Thanks very much for watching. I think we should bring this one to a close. Thanks also to everyone who's gone to that pedal show store and bought something that keeps us going, as do all you lovely people who are patrons that helps us keep going too. And also to our preferred retailers who you can see in the description box if you click it down. Dan and I'll be back on Mondays, Tuesdays and Fridays with more VCQs, vlogs and regular That Pedal Show episodes. In the meantime, I think I need a lie down. <laughs>